Sleep deprived and bleary eyed, I set off in the early hours of the morning to one of the southernmost points in New Zealand. It was so cold and windy, I could literally feel the icy breath of Antarctica reaching out to me from just across the sea. The epic sunrise I hoped for didn't transpire, so I spiced the shot up with a long exposure to capture movement in the clouds. This was a one-off trip, so without the colour I hoped for, I'm going to be leaning on Luminar AI's colour harmony to see if it can save the day. In the last video I gave a demonstration of how to use the Colour Harmony tool and I went through every single tool and explained exactly how it works and affects your photo. A lot of you asked for a demonstration on landscape photo, so that is what we're going to be doing today. But I'm going to do this in a three-step process. The first will actually be improving the general image, just getting it looking good pretty quickly. And then the second stage will be using the Colour Harmony tool. And the third and final stage will just be me putting on some finishing touches just so that you get an experience right from the start to the finish of what I consider to be a complete edit inside of Luminar AI. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'd recommend you do is open up the light section here and we have the profile tab here, which as we drop that down, you can see that I have a load of camera matching profiles and I would recommend going for something like a camera neutral or camera standard. Now making that change might not look like a big deal, but it is gonna to help to much more accurately map your colors from your camera to how it's represented inside of Luminar AI. If you don't see your camera more Model in the list, there's a couple of things that could be going on. Potentially Luminar AI doesn't support your camera model, or the second thing is perhaps you shot in JPEG instead of RAW. Now you wanna make sure you're shooting in RAW if you wanna be editing your photos, because that's gonna allow you to get the most out of your photos. There's a lot more detail in there. If you guys would like an explanation from me on JPEG versus RAW, why you shoot one rather than the other, and sort of a bit of an overview of the file types, just write JPEG versus RAW in the description, and I'll do that for you. Now we've got our camera matching profile applied, our colors have got a good base to work from. So now let's take a nice shortcut and we'll jump into the Enhance AI section. I'll grab the Accent AI slider, let's crank this up. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. Okay, 100% is too much, but I can never resist pushing it all the way. Let's set this at 50% and have a look. Let's click our eye tool for a before and an after. Just about every time I use the Accent AI slider on any of my photos, I'm always pleasantly surprised by just how much it can do for you in the edit just with that one slider. And I've got absolutely no qualms with letting the AI just give me a little booster just to help me on my way with my edit and just speed me up in my workflow. Okay, let's jump into the structure AI. Let's move this up and just see what this is doing for us. Yeah, I like that enhancement, particularly on the grass. Okay, if I open up the color section here, in most photo editors, we're going to find very similar color controls to this, but we're not using a standard photo editor. We're using Luminar AI. So we're gonna make the most of the fact that we have color harmony available to us. So for now, we'll just move on past this section. The details section, I may wanna just add a little bit of sharpening. Now, somebody said to me the other day, oh, I don't really see a difference when I'm using the sharpening slider, but here's the thing. I'm displaying a 45 megapixel file here on the screen. So you're not gonna see all the fine details that you would when you actually print this out. So obviously let's zoom in. And now if I toggle this off and on and you look at the grass, you can definitely see a change as I turn this off and on. If we wanted to add in some of the medium and large details, we could do that as well. I never really like to take them too far. Let's have a look at our before and after. Awesome, let's move on. Let's jump into the landscape section. Maybe we'll pop a little bit of this dehaze in there. Now I'm quite liking the color enhancement that this is giving us, but I'm gonna ease this right back because really what I want to do in this video is achieve our color result more through the color harmony tool than Luminar's other tool. So I'm only gonna ease a little bit of that in. You know, if I grab the golden hour slider and bump that up, that gives it a lovely warm evening look, but I don't really wanna leverage that in this particular edit. So we'll move on past that and as I scroll down and we can see color harmony here, before we get into that, let's just have a quick look at our before and after. Okay, so we've got a pretty anemic kind of shot beforehand, uh, lacking in detail, lacking in contrast, and already before we've done any color editing, we've brought a lot more interest and life into this photo. It may just be a little bit overcooked perhaps, but obviously, as you guys know, that's why we have this template slider down here where we can just reduce the overall effect when we're done. But now, boop, boop. 
It's the exciting time. It's time to look at color harmony. Let's get into that. And we can see we've got a lot of sliders, all with different hues on them, which at first glance possibly seems a little overwhelming and confusing. But don't worry, guys, by the time I've finished this edit and you've watched this video, I'm sure you have a much better understanding of it. But if you still don't, by the time I've gone through all of these, I'd suggest you check out my last video I did because I really go through in depth each tool and how it works. So I'll put a link to that in the description. Also, if you don't have Luminar AI yet, I'll put a link in the description with a discount code at Sky10 that you can help yourself to as well. Right. Right, let's get into the sliders. Okay, I'm gonna grab the Brilliant slider and start easing that up. And as I do, you can basically see that all of the colors in the photo are getting much more saturated. Absolutely, this is too much, but for the anemic photo that we had originally, it's nice to be able to just inject a little bit more color into it. Let's put in 15 on the brilliance and move on to the warmth slider. Now, if I push this to the right, you can see that we're introducing more oranges and yellows into the hues. Take it to the left, we're making everything much cooler. I'm not 100% sure whether I want to cool this off or warm it up. So what I'll do is double click it, just leave it at zero for now, and perhaps I'll come back to that. I really love the color contrast slider and I've got to give Skylum some kudos for coming up with a really unique tool here. This tool allows us to select a color that we want to brighten up and then whatever color is opposite that color on the color wheel, it's going to darken that color down, thus creating contrast between the two colors. So let's take a look at how that works. Currently we can't access the hue slider because our amount is set to zero. So first things first, let's move this up slightly. And straight away we saw a difference. And as I move the hue slider to different areas along this hue line here, we can see that the color that I select, in this case blue, that gets brightened up. So the sky has got brighter and then the opposite color, so opposite to blue would be in the orange zone here, that now gets darker. So that's why the clouds and some of the grass brush here has got darker. And as I carry on moving that through we just get different effects in the photo so that's how it works on an intellectual level but you can basically just move this hue slider and just see what you like the look of so for me in this one I quite like the idea of just positioning the hue just between the yellows and the greens there and we're totally bleaching out the clouds up here but I like the idea that that's brighter and our eye is going here I also like the fact that we've brightened up the grass that originally in our very first capture you can see it's pretty dark and dull we've got much more visual interest going on there and I know, I know right now this does not look good. It's oversaturated, it's way too much, but this is where we're gonna be able to jump back to that original color section where we have access to just a basic saturation slider and we're gonna be able to dull this back down to a point where we feel happy. Currently, all I'm trying to do is use the color harmony tool just to bring out the best in the colors, bring out more contrast, more richness, and then I can just ease it back later. So with that being said about easing things back, we don't need that sat at 51. We can just bring this back down, that's zero, and I can just start easing this amount slider up to the right until I get to a point where I feel happy with it. Okay, let's move on to the split color warmth. And I've got all of these drop downs open at the moment. If you don't see all of these sliders, chances are your tool palette is collapsed like this. All you need to do is obviously click on these titles and they will all expand open for you. So the color warmth slider, this can seem a little bit confusing, but if we take either of these sliders, the warm or the cool slider, if we take them to the right, we're gonna be warming things up. If we take things to the left, we're gonna be cooling things down. But the warm slider is gonna affect the colors that are already warm. So the yellows, oranges, reds, the cool slider is only gonna affect the colors that are initially blue, purples, greens. Okay, got that, let's try it out. So if I take the warm slider to the right, I'm gonna expect that the clouds are gonna get much more orangey as they are doing. So we're introducing oranges and reds into the areas that are already orange and red. And now if I take it down to the left and let go, you can see that the lovely yellows and oranges, those nice warm colors are now devoid of color. They've been cooled off. So if you're wanting to neutralize the colors in your photo, this is a really good way to do it. But personally, I wanna just pop a little bit of warmth in there. So now if I move the cool slider, we should be affecting the sky, the sea, and maybe some of these greens in the grass here as well. So what I can do is if I take that to the left and let go, you can see that the blues have been enhanced even more. Those greens have got a richer, deeper green. Whereas if I took it to the right, we're basically warming those areas up. And this is a nice tool to enable us just to bring out a bit more richness in that sky. Let's take a look at color balance now. And in this drop down, we have access to change the hue, the color of the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. And we have access to three sliders which are going to allow us to actually change the colors. So we have cyan red, 
magenta green, yellow and blue. And here's a good visual hack for you. If you think back to the color contrast slider that I talked about earlier, we said that whichever color gets brighter, the opposite color will get darker. And the way colors are organized in a computer might be slightly different to how you normally think about complementary colors in like a traditional painting sense. So if you are unsure of the opposite colors, a really good thing to do is just look in the color balance tool here and you'll see the opposite of red isn't green, it's actually cyan. The opposite of green is actually magenta and the opposite of blue, unlike in the painting world where it'd be orange, in the computer it's actually yellow. But it's all right here for us in that color balance tool. So just if you're ever unsure, just have a look there. With that being said, let's have a look at how this tool works. If I wanted to push a little bit more magenta into those highlights, I can absolutely do that. Let's say I thought the highlights were a little too yellow, we could just pull a little bit more blue in there. More often than not, in the highlights, I like to add warm colors and cool colors into my shadows. So I'm just gonna move these sliders just until I feel like we're warming up those highlights nicely. And now we could jump into the shadows or the midtones, and we can change in the midtones the overall sort of look of the photo if we wanted to. We could push things to a more blue or cyan, or if we wanted to, we could push things a bit warmer and just keep that warm vibe going. But in this case, I don't think I want to do too much to the midtones. Let's jump into the shadows and I'm going to put in pretty much the opposite of what I did in the highlights, which was introduce a nice warm tone. This time we're going to go to the cooler color. So push into the cyan, push into the blue, maybe a little bit of magenta in there. Okay, if I toggle out before, we've gone from one extreme to the other. In terms of color, here we've got a bit of a washed out, tepid look. And now if I switch back to what we've just done, oh my eyes, it looks like a rainbow has power chucked all over our photo here. So what can we do about it? Well, we could come into the slider at the very bottom inside Luminar AI, pull that back, and obviously that's gonna pull that effect back. But at the same time as doing that, it's also going to be reducing the effect of the Accent AI, the structure that we applied at the beginning. And I don't really want to do that, but a more refined way around that is to use the mask that comes with the Color Harmony tool. And we're going to invoke it with 50% opacity, paint it everywhere, all over the photo. And so the effect that we've created here is going to be applied to our photo, but with 50 percent only. So let's have a look how we do that. Come over to the add mask icon here. We're going to click that once and already my opacity is pretty close to where I want it, 50 percent. And I have my brush set to its largest size, 400 here, and that's going to allow me to click once here. And now I can just start in the top right and work my way in very broad strokes all over the photo. And now when I let go, we're going to see the mask disappear and the color harmony tool is going to reappear. But now with only 50 percent of the effect, applied to the photo. So here we go, I'm gonna release, and there you go. It's very similar to what we had before, but now with only 50%. So this was our before, and now this is our color harmony effect, and I think that looks much better. That technique of painting with a mask allows us to come in and refine that mask even further if we want. So if there were certain areas that we thought, yeah, I really like that strong color through the cloud here, we can come in and just paint over just that area. And now the clouds will get slightly more vibrant. I could do a pass over the top of the blue sky and that's just gonna darken that area down. And if we felt like the foreground was just getting away on us a little bit, we can come into the eraser tool here, maybe erase it with say 30%. And I'm just gonna paint quickly over the foreground like that. And now we've got a much more refined mask. Here's our before and here's our after. And now I'm gonna take a quick look at Luminar AI's other tools and just see if we can't just polish this photo a little more, refine things and just get something that we really like. So let's close Color Harmony down and we'll come all the way back up to the light section here because this is gonna enable us to come into the highlights because the clouds are just getting a little bleached out and as I drop those highlights back, we're just recovering the detail in the highlights of the clouds here, and that does look much better. I'm not super happy with the two to three ratio that we have here, and there's also one other thing that's kind of bugging me, and that is because of the angle I had to have the camera on, it looks like the lighthouse is kind of wonky. So we're gonna come into the Composition AI tool here, and the first thing I'm gonna do is actually sort out that lighthouse. So I reckon if I bring the vertical down to, yeah, there you go, somewhere around minus 18, and now we have a nice straight lighthouse. The next thing, I'm gonna come into the ratio section here, and let's try 16 to nine. And if we look at the grid lines that we have set up here, we've got pretty much all of the foreground set in that bottom third. We've got all of the cloud interest or the majority of it set in that center third. And then you have the top of the sky in the very top third. I quite like that. We could bring things up just slightly and then sit the horizon line bang on that third but we don't need to be that precise let's go with that 
Okay, let's jump into the color section and just see if we can't just ease those colors back just so they're not quite as in your face as they are at the moment. So let's open the color section here so we can bring the saturation down slightly and we can also just ease back on that vibrance. And now the HSL section, the hue, saturation and luminance allows us to control the individual colors. So for my personal aesthetic preference, there's a couple of things that I'm not overly in love with with the colors. One being just how bright and vibrant the red of the lighthouse is here. And also, I don't really feel like the greens are tying in particularly nicely with this photo. So let's see what we can do. Let's come to the hue section and let's just see whether we can push those reds more into the orange hue, just so it ties in better with the oranges in the clouds. In the luminance section, we can grab the reds luminance and just bring that down, maybe not that far, just to darken it. And we also want to desaturate those reds as well. With the greens, I've got the option to either desaturate them slightly or another option would be to come into the hue section, just grab the greens and I'm gonna force them more into those yellow hues. This is not the color harmony tool by name, but the hue, saturation and luminance section within the color tool actually allows us to enhance and build on the color harmony principles. If in your photo you've got colors from all over the spectrum, you're gonna have a lot of color clashes going on. So if you're able to better unify them into a more cohesive color palette, as I was trying to do here, the chances are you're gonna have a much more pleasing color palette at the end of your edit. Okay, let's keep going with our edit. I do like to add a little bit of a vignette, so I'm gonna just push the amount down to minus 41 here. I might increase the size ever so slightly. And as I often recommend, just increase the feathering because that's just gonna help soften it off and add to the believability. And now I'm gonna come to Sky AI and we're actually gonna switch out the sky. No, I'm not. Imagine that. Imagine how ridiculous that would be, fine tuning the sky, working with all the colors. And now I'm going to change the sky. <laughs> What a wally. Right, let's keep going. Okay, let's add some mystical. I'm gonna grab the amount and this is just gonna help give us a nice, soft, ethereal, dreamy quality. Let's toggle our before and our after. And I think that just plays into the style of this photo quite nicely. Everything we've done with color so far, we've been completely in control of. But now what I'd like to do is just leverage the power of LUTs. I really love the fact that we can just mouse over the different LUTs on the right hand side and straight away we can see what it's doing to our photo. Do we like it? Don't we like it? And when we find one that we like, we can just say, yep, I'm going to apply that. So in this case, I quite like the pinky purple vibe that San Diego is adding. So I'm just going to click that, play with the amount. Do I want more of it? Do I want less of it? Mm, just toggle it left and right. Normally I find that the amount that it starts on, which is 30, is a pretty good place for it. We can increase or decrease the contrast. We can bring back a little bit of that saturation if we want to. Okay, let's have a quick look at our anemic friend from the start. And now let's see how far we've come. That is a big change from this to this. And most of the work was done with that color harmony tool. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Please let me know in the comments. I could keep editing this all day. So I'm just finishing up the photograph in the lighthouse. But out of the water appeared three gentlemen dressed in full scuba outfit, but they've told me that there is a sea lion just down here in the grass and they walked straight past it. Um, so I'm gonna put the telephoto on so as not to disturb him and see if I can get a little shot of him. So here I am set up here and if you look just there, that's where our sea lion is, just down there, that black mark. Oh, he's lifting his fin up. I'm gonna go and say hello. Ah. <laughs> <laughs>